the first lady to the officers and members of St. Lou. How good it is that the Lord has favored us with another day of life. Would you put your hands together, receive our presider, Dr. Elizabeth Thank <laughs> you. 
nestled in there. Once more and again, we come as humble as we know how, Lord. Coming first, Lord, to say thank you for your son, Jesus, who died on the cross. Thank you, Father, for dying for my sins, your sins. Father, we know there's nothing that we have done to deserve, to deserve your grace and your mercy. But Father, if it wasn't for your grace and your mercy, where would we be? We come, Lord, saying thank you for last night's sleep. Thank you, Lord, for those angels that watched over us as we laid a picture of death. Then, Father, early this morning, sometime before daybreak, you allowed those angels, Lord, to come down and touch this old wicked body. Lord, Father, the blood stopped flowing. Eyes wide open. Able to hear, touch, feel. Then, Father, we got up clothed in our right mind. Food on our table. Clothes on our back. Then, Father, we got up and started just the way just to worship you. Lord, if those wasn't enough to say thank you, Father, I don't know what it is, but your good self that you allowed us the road one more day, then come to your, your household to serve you, Lord. What must we do? What must we not do? Or what must we have done to deserve your goodness, your grace, and again, Lord, your mercy? We thank you, Father, for being here. We ask you, Lord, that you will just come into this service, touch someone, somebody that doesn't know you in a part of their sin. We ask you, Lord, to just touch their bodies and touch them. They might run and say, Lord, what must I do to be saved? Well, Father, if they don't even want to get up and do that, Lord, just touch them. I'm asking you to touch their body that they might know you in a part of their sins. Father, we ask you to just touch our man, sir. Give him something, Lord, that will bring him down in the storehouse that we would have to nurse not only for today, Lord, but for the week and the weeks to come. Let us be heroes of the word, doers. Then we ask, Lord, that you would just touch the sick, the shed in, wherever they might be, the weak, the souls that here we got the church touch each and every one of us under the sound of our voice, Lord. Those that's not here, we ask you, Lord, to just come by and just touch their bodies and their souls. That one day they might just come on back in, whether it be on a crutch, whether it be on a wheelchair. Makes no difference how they get here, Lord. Just let them get here. That's what we ask you, Lord. And we know, Father, we ask not because we have not. So right now, Lord, ask it in your son Jesus' name that one day we all might be able to come and serve you the way, Lord, that you would like to be served. And Father, at the end of the journey, eyes are closed, tongue has 
seal to the top of our mouth. We ask of you, Father, that you just look down on us and say, Lord, come on in. Come in and rest. We also, Father, thank you that the earth wheel, earth wheel, had the road to each and every one of our families. We should continue to bless each and every one of us, bless our associate pastor, each and every one of us, the mothers, the deacons, the lay members. We ask your Father that if you would do these things, we'd be so careful to give you all the glory, all the honor, and Lord, we know you need all the praise. We call praises. When we praise, praises go up, blessings come down. So we give you all the praise, Lord. These blessings and all of the blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Let the church say amen. Amen. Amen.
Shouting, oh God, does not constitute going to church. Please remember our signature statements. Good morning. Amen. Let's give the Lord a hand of praise and thanksgiving. Certainly it's good to be here this morning. I greet you all in the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, to Dr. Clark and all of our officials at St. Luke, to this very fine choir, amen, and Elder Cobb and Brother David. Let's give them a hand of love. To our ushers and greeters, and we're certainly happy to see our children worshiping and serving on this morning, amen. I do want to congratulate Mother Dixon and her committee for a very fine vacation Bible school this year. Amen. 
It was a nice turnout, and we asked, amen, the parents to continue to encourage their children because on this third Sunday is the youth day. Amen. Also today, um, Sister Mary Johnson, amen, will be, amen, awarding and recognizing our youth and their graduates, amen, uh, today. On the fourth Sunday afternoon at 4 p.m., the senior urchins will be celebrating their anniversary. Well, I guess will be Pastor Kittrail and Rouse's Chapel will be our guest. So we do invite you to come out again and support. We want to thank uh, Men's Fellowship for the beautiful service on last Sunday afternoon. Amen. And we thank God for the preacher. <laughs> Amen. Amen. He got his message over, didn't he? A little different, but praise God. He got it over. <laughs> um, I do want to say again, we welcome and ask you all to celebrate Juneteenth. This is our holiday celebration. Amen of liberty. Amen. Amen from our culture. So we ask you to study it, share it with your children. There are events happening on tomorrow and throughout today. So I would invite you, ma'am and sir, to learn all you can and study the history of it because this is our holiday. July 4th is a different story. Amen. Amen. But this is a holiday where we were free men and women in the United States of America. All right. Also, lastly, I, I do want to just say again, let's pray for one another. Pray for uh, Mother Seawood. And she's recovering. We're certainly glad to see, uh, amen, uh, um, Sister Bruton back with us. And she's doing well. Amen. Pray for also Dr. Mabel's Griffin. And, you know, as I look over the congregation today, I'm filled with joy in knowing that prayer changes things. And when we pray together, God works good things. Amen? Amen. Ain't that right, Sister Cummings and Sister Miles? When we pray together, God works good things. Amen. Amen. To the youth, you're on vacation, but obey your mother and father's instruction. Amen. If they say stay home, that means stay in the house. Don't go out there wandering in the street. Stay in the house. Be careful of your company. And please, ma'am and sir, be careful, young people, teenagers. Be careful who you talk with on media. Because there are a lot of things happening that are not right. If you can't see the face, don't listen to the voice. Hello, somebody. Amen. Amen. And then if you don't know who it is, don't talk to them at all. Because a lot of times it ain't who you think. Amen. So we ask you to be careful. Lastly, we thank God for everyone and we pray you have a blessed day. No Bible study this week. We will be in general conference uh, starting on Wednesday through next Sunday. So no Bible study this week. Amen. We ask you to share that time with your family. But as many as can, come to the tabernacle. It'll start on Wednesday all the way through next Sunday. Okay? God bless you in heaven. Smile upon you. going to ask you. Amen. Sister Johnson, are you ready? Amen. Give her a hand as she comes.
uh, elementary, going to middle school, and I guess Lenore kind of is a little different with the middle school than the junior high. Right. So our first one on this list is, I thought I was gonna see her, Kalayla Dixon. Where is she? Oh, girl, I didn't recognize you. You all grew during COVID. COVID didn't stop you all from growing. She is uh, leaving E.B. Frank Middle School tall, and she will be attending. Thank you, Mr. And attending Lenore Elementary College, Lenore Community College, Early College. Okay. August Coons, leaving fifth grade, going to middle school in Johnson County. Kamaya Pickford, that's Davis' daughter. She was with a lot of the youth on here were very active before COVID. Okay, Kamaya Pickford, fifth grade. He's getting his lesson here. <laughs> um, going to sixth grade, Sky Kilpatrick. Where's Sky? <laughs> Is going to middle school at Frank, right, Sky? Okay. Elementary, second to third grade. I wish you did. Thank you so much, Grandma. 
Zariah Washington. I'm just going to call your names and ask you to stand if you're in the room. Uh, Mary Johnson, of course. George Coast is our co chair. Karen Winley. Karen Winley is our secretary. Shonda Lawton is our treasurer. And we have Sister Lucy Graham. And we are seeking new members for the scholarship committee. Okay, scholarship applications. I'm trying to get them off my computer. But if there is any of the youth who's going to college and our youth who are returning to college, give me a call or send me a text message and I will mail it to you and then next Sunday I will bring them to church. The deadline is July 15th. So go on now, tomorrow morning, Call your schools and order your transcripts if you plan to apply for a scholarship. We must have the transcript and the application together. Okay? Thank you so very much. That would be All right. Thank you. Let's give Sister Hannah Johnson and her committee a hand of support. And a job well done. Congratulations to all graduates and promotees. We're proud of your success. And one theologian, which is something I keep within me when I'm a goal setter, the journey of a thousand miles begin with the first step. Thank you for stepping. Continue on to higher heights is our prayer to all of you. My brothers and sisters, it's time for tithes and offering. Let's put our hands together. We're going to ask our students to come and let's prepare. And we continue to worship in giving in the name of the Lord our tithes and our offering. Praise God. Yesterday, we were part of a four and a half hour funeral, and it was for the worthy of cause. This was for a pastor preacher who was 102 years old. He had preached over 70 years, so we were requested by the family to come and represent, and I'm certainly glad we did. In the evening when I got back home, but praise God, it was a grand service. Amen. A large family. He had 16 children, 51 grandchildren, 31 great grandchildren. So praise the Lord. He, amen, was definitely a trailblazer. And the Lord bless his seed. Amen. Have a large family, and some of them are preachers, so the, the legacy will continue. Amen. Our trustee Michael and trustee McFadden.
May we all stand, raise our offering, our tithes before God. Amen. And let us pray. Eternal God, our Father, we thank you for offering time. Time to worship you in the gifts that you've given unto us. We pray, God, you bless every tithe, every offering. Send the increase because you're able to make it more than enough. And bless each and every one of us in our needs. For you are the God of Jehovah Jireh, who's able to do exceedingly and abundantly. And we thank you in advance, for it's in Jesus' name we pray, and the church says, Amen. amen. Right.
What time is it, church? Word, word time. Anybody need a word this day? From the Lord. Amen. Every day from the Lord. Ain't God good? Amen. So, you know, we all, I think everybody here know about this, our pastor here, this preaching ability. Amen. Amen. All his degrees, and he just knows all about the word. And, and, and not only that, he, he, he abides in the word, abides in him. The Lord is dealing with him through the week of what to tell us. So don't you, uh, if, he, if he comes down the street this morning, don't get upset. Say, hallelujah, thank you, Jesus. God is worthy. Amen. So we're going to have one more selection from this part of the singing to the glory of the Lord. Let's give them another hand of praise. And then we will have none other than our own, our pastor, Bishop Joe Anderson, coming to break the bread of life. Amen. Amen. Sing choir. Preach faster. Bishop Dixon, in honor of Juneteenth, we wanted to do one of those soul-stirring spirituals for the spiritual today. And so, I'm going to ask everybody to sing with us. If you don't know it, you can learn it because it's easy, okay? So just follow us. Yeah. 
to the glory of God. Would you give the Lord a hand of praise? <laughs> to those graduating post-COVID, would you give them a hand? <laughs> and Deacon Noah is one of those graduates, and we already know where he's going to college. We already know where he's, he's planning for his future, and I pray the Lord bless him. Amen. Amen. We need more in that field whether we want to talk about it or not. Right. Amen, amen. There's a job for everybody. Am I right? Amen. amen, amen. How many of you have seen a toddler scream when the parents is trying to put the baby in a stroller or put him in the car seat? All right? The baby, baby, it sort of uh, scampers and sort of resists being put in that position because the baby wants to either run free or don't want to be a man uh, tied down. All right. Well, in life sometimes, young people, when we are in school for an example, amen, you're going through a stage of learning. And stage of learning is going to take you out of TV. It's going to take you out of the media. You won't be able to use your phone. You won't be able to use a tablet. And I know it's sort of like despairing because I, I want you to know um, I learned from my grandchildren. I don't know much about this tablet and all them. I don't know if all the preachers use them, but I'm sort of comfortable with <coughs> traditional methods. Now, I've got tablets. I've got, I even tried to put my sermons in them. Praise God. But to me, it sort of takes me away from a position that I'm comfortable in. I wasn't seen in black and white. I don't talk about me. Can I get a witness? <laughs> Amen. I can type. I can do all those things. Amen. But 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 sometimes you can that screen got a way of homing you into it if you stay in it long time. Amen. So 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 when we think about the toddler and the resistance, amen. I, 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 as I look back on my life, I was in a grade, same as you. I had to come through the amen ranks like you. I didn't want to go to school. I, they, they thought homework was boring. You stay in school all day, they, they give you homework. <laughs> yeah, because you're to learn. Life is full of stages. Time outside forces, even in our own manufacturing. Even the Bible tells us in Ecclesiastes, the third chapter, verse 1, to everything there is a season. Huh? To everything there is a purpose. If you don't learn as a young people, don't get 70 like I am, trying to go through kindergarten, trying to get through elementary, trying to put you into junior high, going back to high school. For me to go back to high school, I mean, pretty much, if I had to go back, I'd probably be the honor student. Because I'll be bringing some wisdom the rest of me don't have. <laughs> I've surpassed that stage of when I get grown and on my own. Lord, help me. I know what it is to have a budget. I know what it is to pay bills. I know what it is to raise a family. I know what it is to live for others besides yourself. Am I making it easy? Well, today we also want to commemorate Happy Father's Day to all of our dads. Stories told one day of a little boy when he was asked to explain Father Day. He said, it's just like Mother's Day. The only thing is, you don't spend as much on the gifts. <laughs> I believe we got a witness. I got several texts this morning, but I didn't get no kid. <laughs> as, you may, as you may know, the very first national celebration of Father's Day 
was in June 19, 1924, by the proclamation of President Calvin Coolidge that's some time ago. But it all came about because of the efforts of a daughter named Sonora Smart. She was still grieving over the passing of her mother. But since her mother's death, her father had been there for her and took care of all the boys that seemed to have been in her life. Sonora wanted her father to know how special he was for all his parental sacrifices and for being to her, amen, so courageous, selfless, and then loving. And to make a long story short, 25 years later, through her efforts, President Coolidge designated the third Sunday of June as Father's Day. And that's why we have it today. Give the Lord a hand to pray. In our text, one of the wisest of all preachers or teachers or Bible characters was Solomon. Solomon came from a very strong religious background because David was his father. And Solomon had asked God uh, back in his younger days, amen, God asked him, what can I do for you? It says you're a covenant child. And Solomon said, give me wisdom. You, you know, you got to be careful how you ask God for things. Because God gives it abundantly. Anybody know what I'm talking about? And God gave Solomon some of the greatest wisdom. And because you think about the wealth he inherited. And then the wealth he gained. And all that went with it. He would have had, had more than the average man knowledge and wisdom. Amen, amen. Listen to this, 700 wives, 300 girlfriends, all of them lived in the same house. You know God gave that man some wisdom. I don't read in none of the Bible history there was a divorce or a separation. Y'all may well talk to me. Ladies, you know, when a lot of women get together and start talking, somebody ain't going to be in agreement. Can I get a witness? I better I'm gonna hit and run on this one, especially when it's about a man. I better preach. <laughs> the Spirit of the Lord began to tell Solomon mm -hmm, that that uh, God want us to prosper. God want us to have success in this life. But but with that, we got to understand we got to grow. Growth requires maturity. Amen. I, I want you to know that. Amen. Between the ages of twelve and fourteen, youth brain begins to develop and it's not fully developed until you're about 27 or 28 young people. So those of you 12 and 14, you, you got some room to grow. Amen. Amen. That's why a lot of time parents when you're trying to get the young people in that category to understand or to see your viewpoint it's hard for them because they're not there yet. Amen. 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 Uh, uh, Solomon says, amen, the beginning of a thing. <laughs> How many of you ever started a project and you got so frustrated with it, you gave it up and just said, I'm going to do something else. I want you to know, I lost nine children. My sister, Sarah, that lives in Florida, we were puzzle geniuses of the family. Amen. Because most of the uh, siblings would mind the 50 or the 20 piece puzzle. They could put that together in the breeze. But when it got to be 300 and 500, they would leave the table. And only me and Sarah would be the only one there to finish it. Why? Because it required a little more effort and then more patience. And when you're young, you don't like to be contained but so long. 
Oh, I didn't get the race up. I thought I was going to get it up. Get a loud voice. Hey, Amen. We want to get it done, but we don't want it to take all day or next week. Am I right? right? Young people, the first thing you need to get right in life, amen, is setting some priority. And the best one I know is Matthew 6 and 33. Seek ye first the kingdom of God and his righteousness, and then all, whatever you need, God will provide. And he will make a way for you. And he will put the right people in your path to help you along the way. Anybody know what I'm talking about? Yeah. Proverbs 2 and 1 says, My son, if you receive my word and treasure my command within you, so that you incline your ear to wisdom and apply it to your heart and with understanding, you will have good days. Amen. How many of us want to have a happy life? A prosperous life? Amen. A life that, amen, I, I, I don't have to worry about this, that, then the other. I'm here to tell you, Jesus said, I come that you can have that life and have it more abundantly. Amen. Tell somebody to move up. I'm almost there. I want to share this acronym. Write it down, young people. A I M. And I'm through. Moving up. A I M. A deals with attitude. If you have an attitude that you know everything and nobody can tell you nothing, you're in a bad shape. Hello? See, your attitude should be the same as that of Jesus Christ. In Philippians 2 and 5, Paul says, I can do all things through Christ that strengthens me. Young people, my best advice, keep Christ out in front of you in all you do. In your schoolwork, in your school activity, come on. I and mean, then listen, you can still pray. You just can't call a congregation. Look at David. Didn't he have to fight a Goliath? 
But who won? David. Am I right? Samson had to wrestle that old lion. I don't care what folks said. He was sick. He was wounded. I don't care. Samson won. Can I get away? <laughs> And then my third acronym. Mindset. Mindset matters to each to reach your desired end. Listen to the text. It says the beginning is better than the end. Listen. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to to approve what is the will of God. Amen. He, what his will is. See, renewing the mind is very important. Image for mind. As human beings, we fix up something in our mind and we go by that alone. We're never willing, able to change our mind, but Paul calls us to uh, uh, caution ourselves let this mind be in you that was in Christ Jesus. See, acknowledging God in all we do, he blesses us more ways than one. Am I right? In my conclusion, now that you will be, amen, moving to another level, and you've got your aims set and your priorities in mind, I just want to conclude by saying Solomon is right. When we put God first, everything will fall right in line. And God will, 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 will accompany you with the right people to be a buffer for you. Because in life, you're going to run into bullies. Whether you want them or not, you're going to have them. They're going to come. If they ain't in the classroom, they're on the bus. If they ain't on the bus, they're at the bus stop. If they ain't at the bus stop, they're in your neighborhood. You're going to run into a bully. Am I right? But you can't let the bully stop you. Bless you. The other week, it was so heartbreaking and exciting. I went to my last grandson. The last, the youngest grandson, he graduated. JJ from the eighth to the ninth. <coughs> JJ, he's really grown to me. He's almost close to me. He's, he's in Charlotte this week playing AAU basketball. Amen. He's a leading scorer in their conference. Uh, people say, Where did he get that from? I said, It's in the roots. <laughs> <laughs>
couldn't go to your classroom, but you survived. You were promoted. Hello? Come on, somebody. You couldn't contact your peers. Amen. But you held in there and succeeded. The choir that sung shared a song, and this is what I'm going to close with, to the young people and to all of you that are achievers. I've never heard the song. You probably know it. But it's called Climb. The song is called Climb. Amen. And it's written by Malik Cyrus. Malik Cyrus. Malik Cyrus. It's called Climb. There's always going to be another man. Always going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometime I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm always going to have to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometime you're going to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's the climb. Keep on moving. Keep on climbing. Keep the faith, baby. It's all about it's all about the climb. Keep your faith. Keep your faith. I can almost see it. That dream I'm dreaming. But there's a voice inside my head saying, you'll never reach it. Every step I'm taking, every move I make, feel lost with no direction. My faith is shaking. But I got to keep on trying. I got to keep my head held high. There's always going to be another mountain. I'm all, I'm, I'm going to want to make it move. Always going to be an uphill battle. Sometimes I'm going to have to lose. Ain't about how fast I get there. Ain't about what's waiting on the other side. It's struggle I'm facing, the chances I'm taking, sometimes might knock me down. But no, I'm not breaking because it's worth the climb. God bless you in heaven and smile upon you moving up. May we all stand. Is there one who decides to follow Jesus? And make him Lord of your life. I extend the gospel invitation. Jesus said come. Because I have come for you. And he that cometh unto me. I will in no wise. Turn them away. It's your move. When you come. Praise the Lord. Someone desire church membership. Someone desire to receive Christ in their heart. Is there one? Praise the Lord. If not, give the Lord a hand of praise. And may God bless you. As you stand, can I pray with you and pray for you and thank God for this day. Dear Lord in heaven, we're thankful for all you've done and the blessings on all of our lives. Thank you for the young people and God how you brought them another school year. Kept them in safety and out of harm's way. Many bullets have been shot all over our country. But thank you, Lord. Not one of them came down unto them. We thank you. We pray now, God, you bless their parents, their grandparents. Continue to bless St. Luke Church. Every member of the officer. And help us to come closer together. For God, we owe it all to you. Because you've been good. 
those COVID years, you've still been good. We're on the other side of it, Lord. Help us, Lord, to give you the praise, the honor, the glory you deserve. Because, Lord, had it not been for you, we could have been gone too. But thank you. Bless us now, Lord. Touch the ones that are sick, weak, maybe feeble, I pray. You would strengthen Dr. Mabel Griffin and touch and restore Mother Seawood. Hey, right now, God, if there's somebody in the room with a pain, by your stripes, we're claiming healing now. Oh, right now, in the name of Jesus, bless us now. Lead us and then guide us. And Lord, during this Juneteenth weekend, Help us as families, Afro-American families, to teach and train our children about our heritage, how you brought us, how you, the God of Isaac and Abraham and Jacob, brought us, oh God, to what?